Good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, thanks, uh, thanks again for joining uh, Mybo Umbrella. I'm Michael Contento, the CEO uh, at Mybo Umbrella. Uh, we are taking this opportunity during COVID-19 to present a series of webinars to uh, assist our clients and anyone else that is looking for assistance in, in understanding uh, the technology being used today and how it impacts uh, the data we have at the office. Uh, today's presentation is going to be talking about working from home and security around working from home. Um, we are going to allow some questions and answers at the end of the presentation. Feel free to add your questions in the uh, question column. And at the end, uh, Brian Chasson, our sales manager at MyBloom Bella, will read out some of the questions and uh, we'll do our best to give you the answers we can. As mentioned, today's uh, presentation is, is about how keeping your company's data safe while working from home. We're going to start off by talking about um, we're going to start off by talking about the stages of COVID-19 and business. The way we uh, the way we communicate to our clients, uh, we broke it up in three different stages. Uh, when when this all first started early March, we called it the survive stage, and essentially every business was going through a a o uh, OMG reality and. And how are we going to fund this? Are we going to lose business? Are we going to lose clientele? So during that conversation, it wasn't necessarily uh, to our clients, hey, you know, let's just get your computer to work from home. Uh, it was first talking about how how we're going to support them during this this crisis and understand that you know business will go on if we strategize properly. Once they come out of that survive stage, we start to change our communication to our clients in a more of a stabilized stage. And during this stage, we communicate to our clients all about working from home, constant communication, building health gauges on their company, how they how they perceive um, a lot of the a lot of the metrics and doing business with their clientele. So our communication with our clients were very different at this point. And now uh, for most of our clients, they're in what we call a strive stage. We got them connected, they're working remotely. Uh, it's time to go back to business. Uh, let's, let's talk about not necessarily a, a scaling growth, but how do we keep on forecasting a growth model? So um, these, these stages are very uh, relevant the way we communicate to our clients today. Everything we're going to be talking about today is based on the methodology my Brumbella believes in. Um, we, we do everything first and foremost. We secure an environment, we start defining an environment, and then we control an environment. And under security, uh, it's all about uh, security first, their network protocols. We understand their servers and, and personal devices and how they do business. And then we wrap it around with some governance and backup. So let's talk about working from home and what that really means, the impact on, on company data. We're gonna talk about three very essential aspects. First and foremost is how, how are uh, people accessing their data? Are they connecting from home? Um, then we're gonna go into security measures that should be enforced and, and user policies. Um, essentially, when it comes to security, your security is as good as, this, as its weakest link. So, uh, What's at risk? Let's understand what truly is the risk. Without data, there, there is no work from home. And essentially, what we're trying to do is understand what, what is the right way to connect to the company's data, which gives the most ultimate security. So what data is being accessed, who's accessing it, and uh, how's the data being accessed? I'm gonna share some very, very basic, this presentation is really meant for high level. It's not meant for um, uh, CTOs or, or um, total uh, IT uh, senior leaders. This is more general to give a general aspect to office managers, uh, general managers, CEOs, uh, to understand how the data is being accessed. So most of us understand something called a VPN, a virtual private network. Um, this is essentially the first and, the first and foremost uh, uh, easy and quickest way of connecting users to their data. Um, essentially, what's happening here is a VPN tunnel is created, is a virtual private network from your home to your office. And, and the challenge here is, is it's in a very slow 
uh, a very slow network. And, and the key aspect of why it's being very slow is because essentially you're transferring data by keystroke um, every time you, you hit a new keystroke. So you can imagine that Word document, the Excel document, the PowerPoint document is transferring back and forth constantly from the office to your house which makes that, that experience, user experience, extremely slow. The next one is called remote desktop, which, which definitely increases the speed. Um, what happens here is your, your home user now becomes uh, back in the early technology days of dummy terminals, where mo all the work is being done locally in your office. So no data is being transferred. It's almost little pictures being transferred of what actions you're doing at the office. So uh, all 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 the all the main data that's being uh, that's being worked on is at your local computer or the local terminal server within within your within your office. Uh, speed is great. Cost is really high. Next one is is a cloud based uh, a cloud based environment. For my umbrella, we have uh, uh, something called Work Any Place. Uh, cost is low, speed is low. It's real time access, uh, no data transfer. You're working live off the cloud uh, from any device from anywhere uh, uh, where you can connect. So uh, essentially, the three main the three main is you know a a virtual private network, b uh, a remote desktop experience, something like Logmin, Citrix, uh, Microsoft uh, Remote Desktop, or a cloud-based application like Work Anyplace. Uh, we broke it down to try to give you an idea in a cost pers a perspective. Uh, VPN is definitely a much cheaper uh, connection. Uh, remote desktop can be very costly. Uh, speed is great. Um, cloud is in between. Uh, in, in a productivity point of view, uh, we believe the cloud brings the most productivity. Remote desktop, same as decent productivity. Uh, VPN, uh, if you're trying to transfer data real time, is very low productivity. And the scalability and control follows the same suit. We're going to go how, how security, we're going to get into how security plays a role uh, with users working from home. We want to start with first and foremost, uh, a lot of companies uh, when they were when they were in the stabilize uh, stage, they they were just looking at dumping a large uh, portion of their data on a Dropbox, a box, a shared resource, and one element. Uh, and and understandably, they were just trying to get their business going. Uh, one of the one of the main aspects uh, they they were forgetting about is the user policies. By, by just dumping all your data in a centralized storage, getting everyone to access it, we're losing, we're losing the control on which users can access which files and have which privileges uh, to write on, uh, on that data. So uh, one, of the, one of the things we want to bring to everyone's attention is now that we're hoping that most of our clients are in the strive stage of business, we need to circle back and understand user access. Do we have all the right user access? Do we have the right shares? Uh, are we allowing every user to touch every possible uh, uh, file? Um, and it, it really brings a level of security breach that can cause uh, um, uh, some immediate uh, security breaches in a cybersecurity point of view, which we'll get into uh, later on later on in the presentation. Uh, but definitely having all users access unlimited data in a single resources will cause will cause a security breach. We're going to go in and talk about working from home. Uh, today, most homes uh, are smart homes and they have a ring doorbell. They have a smart TV. They have Alexa. They have an Ecobee thermostat. Uh, this is one of our biggest concerns when it comes to security. Uh, what a lot of users don't understand is, uh, once again, security is as good as their weakest link. Uh, a smart TV has a administrative password, and by default, a smart TV and any any other IoT device, their default passwords are very uh, basic. It could be zero 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 or one two three four, and it's it's the intention of of the buyer to make sure they go in and change these uh, default passwords. 90% of the time, no home users understand this, and they turn on their TV and they start watching TV uh, 
and completely forget about these security breaches. So currently with all users connecting to companies data and all these great IoT devices uh, in their homes, it, it, it leaves a lot of open doors for hackers to get into their home to get connected to company, uh, company data. So we're gonna go into a few aspects of security. First and foremost is endpoint security. Uh, is, is once we allow users to use their personal computers to access company data in a non-secured environment, where does that leave endpoint security and who, who should really enforce endpoint security? Um, then we go into security for the server, baseline security for the server. Uh, so we, we believe our, our servers are secured and yes, they are, but as we, as we just illustrated with an open IoT based home, if you're opening the door, the server security only can do as, as much as it can simply because the user are allowing uh, information in. And that goes the same for your network, uh, your firewall. Your company might have a firewall, but once again, if your user's opening the door to the firewall to access the data and their environment is not secured, then we have a bit of a problem. So we want to talk about baseline security for end users and how that, that uh, that will assist in, in this work from home concept. Um, whether the home user computer are personal or company owned, we need to enforce a baseline level of security. Uh, we need to get proper software in there, uh, some sandblasting agents, um, uh, certain controls, uh, anti-spam, antivirus. You'll be amazed how many people at home do not have a managed antivirus uh, or anti-spam uh, application. And at a, at a very minimum, today we're talking about a 2FA, um, a 2FA protocol. So two-factor authentication really is an application that drives a bare minimum of security. It allows users to, uh, for the passwords not to get compromised. So we mentioned that smart TVs don't have a good password. Uh, we mentioned that they might have not changed their password on some smart switches or light bulbs. Um, if their houses did get breached, uh, at least to connect to the company environment, uh, they need not only their, their user passwords, but a two-factor authentication that gets text to your phone and a number, uh, a number will get uh, prompted on the cell phone to connect to your data. Um, this is a bare minimum we're trying to push all of our clients into. So essentially, this is a quick diagram. No matter what application you're using today, whether it's a Dropbox, Office 365, Slack, or Google, this protects all users uh, to connect to those devices uh, with a secondary uh, level login of two-factor authentication. So understanding the need, uh, one thing we're trying to push all of our clients, we understand that COVID-19 has, has uh, caused a very dramatic effect uh, both mentally and financially to not only users, but companies. My Brumbella is trying to do its part in supporting our business community. We, we canceled most of our uh, contracts. We are trying to uh, do a month to month basis on getting baseline security uh, loaded on users' computers. This is zero commitment. Uh, what we believe in is supporting our clients and then new clients. We do a free assessment. We try to gauge each user's home, where their pitfalls are, try to give them an understanding of what they need to do. And, and then we load some baseline requirement, very inexpensive baseline requirement, security pa uh, packages on their computers. Uh, once once we're all get uh, once we're all able to go back to work, we would uh, remove all the contents and all the applications if required. We will be going into uh, next week, uh, more in depth about cybersecurity and how cybersecurity will be will be really uh, a a big challenge for work from home. As as mentioned, with the IoT and all these security uh, easy access points, um, it, it is a great time for hackers to roam around and sniff the weakest points. So uh, next week we will be going to in depth on. Uh, teaching base uh, understandings of cybersecurity. We also believe that the number one defense when it comes to cybersecurity is not technology based, it's knowledge based. So uh, during our cybersecurity, we will be doing a quick tutorial and uh, teaching on uh, base definitions 
and how to uh, how to teach users to be the first line of defense versus just hoping technology will protect you. At this point, uh, that finishes our quick uh, webinar on working from home and the security risk of working from home. And uh, I'm going to reach out to Brian to uh, see if there's any quick questions that we can assist users with. Alan, thank you for the question. So sandblasting, sandblasting is a is a uh, uh, an application essentially that is 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 sniffing or how can I do it in a non-technical term that is uh, constantly looking at the data being uh, transferred back and forth and and it's going to it's essentially securing or trying to sniff the data to see any anomalies and any breaches that can happen so we use a sandblasting agent mostly in in uh, our cloud offering uh, work any place so all the data that's being transferred from your browser or your user locally to the cloud agent um, has a, a application that send blasts the data I, what I'll do, Alan, the reason why I asked for your name, I will send you a PDF that has more technical and more in-depth explanation of sandblasting, just so you have it uh, readily available in your inbox. Dual Mobile is a great initiative. I'm not sure what other security initiatives your company has, uh, uh, has uh, engaged. Uh, once again, security is as good as its weakest link. Um, we can uh, we we can definitely get you're anonymous, unfortunately, but we definitely could do a free assessment over the phone. We would we have a 10 point questionnaire that we ask on on uh, how else you're accessing the data. So dual is definitely a layer of the fence, but there's many other layers that uh, will implicate a breach. But I would say uh, the first step of, of accessing your data through dual mobile is, is a really good initiative. Team your uh, it, once again, it, it, it's security is as good as your weakest link. I, I hate to keep on repeating that. So whether it's a minute, 30 seconds or five minutes, you, you're accessing the data. Um, it, it all depends what's on your local computer and, and what you know, you're viewing it. If you're opening the file, um, you, you have a connection without a VPN. Um, we can do a free assessment as well. I won't say you are a Jeopardy, but um, as long as you're accessing the company environment and company network, there's always a possibility of a breach. So the, the general consensus of VPN is really uh, the speed. And, and so VPN technology is a great technology. Um, it, you can enhance security on VPN with SSL VPN, depending the router, uh, the firewall that you have. So you can definitely enhance the security of a VPN connection. Um, VPN is a great connection. The only challenge is, is, is working off of VPN it tends to be a bit cumbersome for a lot of users. Um, what a lot of users end up doing is they copy the data onto their local computer, uh, they work locally, and then they bring it back once they connect back to the VPN or they try to sync it. Um, but if you keep a VPN connection uh, throttled, to transfer the data and try to work locally on a server, it definitely uh, it definitely will be a speed uh, issue. Um, our our main concern is uh, if you open up the VPN and and your and the local home user's computer is infected or does not have any security uh, applications uh, to protect to, to protect it itself, um, you, you're opening a tunnel back to your server. So the tunnel is great, but now your, your weakest link is your user's computer that may be infected or, or your the home home network altogether. Bandwidth definitely plays, uh, definitely is part of the speed issue. Uh, VPN brings a speed issue in itself. And then if you have a poor quality Wi-Fi or poor quality internet connection, it, it definitely plays a part as well. Depending how many people are trying to connect to the server or going through the firewall back at the office, um, we recently had to upgrade a client's internet uh, because all 26 people were connecting through VPN and the, 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 uh, the uh, internet uh, at the office wasn't, uh, wasn't sustainable for all 26 users. Uh, once we upgrade the internet, it did bring some relief, but once again, the VPN itself has, has limitations. So, so VPN is VPN, whether you connect it through a laptop or a desktop, it, it's still your VPN connection. Um, the challenge would be 
uh, securing the laptop or desktop uh, as a as a uh, appliance. So, do you have the right antivirus? Do you have the right security applications? Uh, are you do you have security within the home? Uh, I, I think statistically, 90% of home users do not have a firewall at home. So the minute you connect to BIOS, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, and you're connected to your home network, um, it, it, it's it's whatever what governs is now your home network uh, pushing data into the server. Work any place is definitely browser based, and it's very limited on what how much damage a local user can do. Uh, we so strongly suggest temporarily uh, to protect home users' computers. Um, uh, these applications are very inexpensive, but work any place for for 95% of the time. Uh, if it's 100%, if they're working 100% uh, browser based, yes, they're 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 protected. You're, you're protected. But if if a working place user uh, likes uh, bringing some of the data local or open local files. If they're working with Word locally, uh, it then then you, you have a bit of a breach. VPN is great. There's nothing wrong with VPN. It definitely is a great way of connecting to your data. Um, you can enhance VPN by SSL, by putting a SSL certificate to your VPN, depending on what type of firewall you have. Um, the biggest challenge with VPN is truly the throughput and the speed. Um, it does not protect you from local computers being infected. So it, 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 it's less about the VPN and more what are we doing with local home computers and how are we governing the security of home local computers when connecting through VPN? That's a great question. Unfortunately, I, I don't want to dance around the answer. Uh, I don't use Zoom. Um, we, we are a big Microsoft shop, uh, a gold Microsoft partner. We're a big, uh, big team supporter. Um, I do understand there's been that massive breach recently. Um, I know Zoom is a great company and I'm sure they worked very vigorously to uh, to uh, deal with uh, the uh, weakened security parameters. Um, the only thing I can suggest, Brian, let's take that question away. Um, we'll, we'll help get the answer and email it to the user. Definitely, there's, there's two conversations that one at the administrative level and one at the local level. Um, so we use uh, several several applications uh, internally for passwords. Um, we can definitely and uh, uh, what we can do again is share out the applications we use internally, um, and and that will help you sort of govern your your user passwords. But if you want to go a bit more in depth, uh, what what I mean by the difference between local and administrative. We have a strategy even at the administrative level where we, we protect the administrative passwords as well in, in, a, in a layered approach. So uh, by all means, Gengen, we can, we can set up a separate call, you and I, and I can take you through both the applications and the strategy, how uh, we govern uh, user passwords and administrative passwords. So uh, the onboarding, uh, the onboarding first and foremost, we tie it to the user, um, the user's AD credentials. So when we went back to the concept, the first concept was a lot of companies during the stabilized phase of COVID-19, the only thing they cared about is let's just get the data somewhere that everyone can access. We first want to bring back the, the user credentials and what users can access what data. And, and uh, so we, we start with the onboarding based on user level and understanding their permissions. Uh, then we go into then we go into the baseline requirements. We have a series of, and I think it's here, let me share the screen right here. So we do temporarily because we don't know how long this is going to last. Uh, I, I hear speculations till the end of May, end of June, sometimes July. It depends, you know, uh, how the day goes, if they keep on extending that. We want to control, monitor, and manage patch management the the home user's computer. Most computers, they you know they do some simple updates and they think they're they're up to speed with patch management and and that's not necessarily the case. Then we put in up to date software, the AV, the threat protections, the anti ransomware softwares, and we manage those as well. So this is real time management over the internet. We're we're keeping an eye on it. Um, and then we add the 2FA. So essentially the onboarding process is one, understand the user and the credentials of that user, 
two, we have a, a format of, of standards we, we, we would like the user's computer to adhere to, and that will be these baseline requirements in a security point of view. We can also send you more information, Brian. I know it's an anonymous user, uh, but if they're willing to give you the information, uh, we can send them the actual step-by-step -step onboarding that we do for uh, home users. So I'm I'm a I'm a Mac user. Uh, we're on a Mac now. Um, so uh, to a certain degree, and and you know, there's controversy about this at all times. Uh, Macs are, are are I need to be careful how I say this. Um, not that they're they're definitely more secure, um, but they're they're not as open to a lot of malicious acts. Let's just say. Uh, but ultimately, it, it still is the data transferring back and forth. So um, I can put a USB key in my Mac that has a virus that's that's not that's not open to the Mac, but that Word document that has a virus attached to it. Once I transfer it into my PC environment of of, of uh, my blue umbrella, um, I still transfer the data. I still transfer that file, the infected file. So you may think uh, your Mac isn't picking it up and chances are it's not picking it up because you don't have the right security applications to govern it, uh, but you still can transfer infected files to the company. So to a certain degree, uh, yes, I would agree with that comment, but it's not necessarily the Mac. The Mac is only a portal that you're using to transfer data back and forth to your company. So I have both and please don't try to hack me. So um, uh, Alexa ring, any node connected to the internet is vulnerable to hacking. It's, that's just, that's a fact of life today. Any, any connected device to the internet has the ability of, of being hacked. That's why it's extremely important to manage your updates. Um, I'm vigorously looking, constantly looking to update my IoT devices in the house. Um, I, I also, given that you know I work for an IT company, I, I do have a firewall at home. Um, if, if you are going to be an IoT-based household that is really enjoying your IT devices, IoT devices, I strongly recommend putting a firewall, a managed firewall, I, at your home as well. I love my IoT devices. But anything connected to the internet is another node that can be hacked. Yeah, I can't I can't comment on node before, but proof point I like. Um, so there's a million different applications out there, Dom. Uh, I, I would I would definitely just ask your uh, and if it's the Dominic, I think it is. You definitely know some of the applications, but um, I, I think uh, I think going with you know industry standard uh, partners. Proof points being one of them. Um, I like them. They, they're definitely good. My Brumbella doesn't use proof point. We use, we don't believe our security practice is we don't believe in one vendor. So our baseline security is made up with several vendors to really uh, to really you know offer an expanded security. Instead of instead of one vendor and one vendor getting breached, then your whole household or your whole system is, is exposed. We use four different. Uh, we use Checkpoint for one. Um, we use Cisco Umbrella for uh, part of it. We use Duo uh, for another part of it. So our, our baseline security is is a comprised of a multi-vendor security practice. With Work Any Place, we definitely do give our clients an option to be able to work locally or browser-based. Um, uh, I, I would love to circle back with a particular client uh, that's asking this. We draw, we, str we strive to have all of our clients working browser-based, but with the understanding of some clients like working locally. So if they are working locally, we just need to make sure their home computers are being protected at the same time. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> we, we, we're, we are trying to push every single one of our clients to have 2FA. Unfortunately, um, there's a cost associated to it. It's not very high. It's actually very, very little per user per month. Uh, but we are, it, that's why we're calling it, it's our baseline uh, requirement. With our Work Any Place product, you, you don't have a choice. You need to have 2FA. Otherwise, we, we actually might not accept you to be on our, on our Work Any Place environment. So 2FA is becoming a mandated uh, application. And, and quite frankly, soon enough, every user is going to be forced uh, for 2FA with every application, whether it's their banking, whether it's Google, whether it's uh, Dropbox, 
what you're going to see this year is is going to be a mandate across most most offerings that you need a 2FA uh, login. Yeah, you know, Microsoft, as we said, it's uh, Microsoft. We're we're a gold partner. Microsoft. We believe in Microsoft. It's it's it's, it's, it's a strategic partner. I think Windows Defender is great. Um, I don't think it should be your only line of defense. So it, 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 it is part of the OS. It's part of the, it, 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 like I mentioned uh, previously, Maurice, we were in, the, were in the mindset that it should be a multi-layer, multi-vendor approach um, versus just every, every, all your eggs in one basket. So it's not that it's not good enough. Um, it's great, but we believe you, you should add more. And Maurice, the applications we're talking about, we're talking about a couple of dollars. We're not talking about a lot of money. So uh, you definitely can use Windows Defender as one of those applications, but we strongly advise that you have a multi, uh, multi-layer, multi-vendor application. So, and it may, may be giving too much information about my personal house. My personal house is done exactly like that, uh, Anonymous. It's multi, multi-layered, multi-VPN. Uh, I have my wife and kids on one and I'm on another. Um, ultimately, that, that definitely brings a layer of security, but eventually if they get into one VPN, you, you know, the hacker's in, the hacker's in, not in my layer yet, but they're in, they're in the past firewall. It's the only time that they'll, they'll break the other VPNs. So I, I, I this, this, this isn't about scaring users, uh, but cybersecurity is a reality. Um, you know, COVID-19 is definitely a open, a open uh, gaming for all uh, cyber uh, hackers because they know a lot of homes are not secured. Um, so, so yes, it brings that extra layer, but without other layers to protect yourself, um, I think I think you'll still be vulnerable. Um, and I, I, I want to reinforce once again: the number one defense is actually free. The number one defense is actually free. It's user training by all means. Um, if each user does his part like COVID-19, let's keep our distance. Um, we will defeat the breaches faster than an application. So uh, you can have as much security as you want, but if you open the door voluntarily, you're still letting the hacker in. Uh, does your internet provider's modem need to be patched as well? Yes, and I'm hoping they're doing it, but that's why I don't, I don't trust, uh, I don't trust Rogers or Bell or the rest of them. It, it's their in their in their service level agreement. I, if you read a foreign print, they definitely do not take on liability of securing your home environment. Um, my firewall is uh, is outside the Rogers. Rogers goes into my firewall. And my firewall governs uh, the Rogers connection. Not, not. Uh, I, I don't. I don't base it on Rogers uh, router. The router is not really a firewall. Well, those were some really good questions. Um, yeah, great questions. Thank everybody for submitting your questions. I hope there was some good dialogue and uh, actually left you with some uh, food for thought. Um, just before I hand this over for our closing remark with Michael, uh, of course, if. Uh, you have not been contacted by uh, an account manager from my blue umbrella you know feel free to reach out to us directly in the whole team at uh, sales at mbu.ca uh, one of us uh, will get back to you right away uh, but michael if i'm going to pass this on back to you just so that you can give everyone the notification of our next upcoming um webinar uh, which will be play, uh, playing in a couple of weeks yeah um i really appreciate you for your time i know it took more than the 30 minutes my apologies, uh, great dialogue. Uh, my, blue, my Blue Umbrella is here to support you all. Um, we, we're being very transparent that it's more the long long play here for us. Um, we're not looking to increase your costs uh, right now. We're, we're just trying to help you go from stabilize to strive and whatever we can do to do our parts to make your company succeed through this, uh, count us in. Uh, you can email sales at mbu.ca with any further questions or feel free to reach out to me directly. I really appreciate for uh, re I really appreciate each of you uh, for all your time. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everyone today. Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe and we'll be in touch soon.